Hello all, and welcome to my latest goofy fucking video on my, as always, goofy fucking channel. This is going to be another acting reel. Uh, this time it is going to be a reading from the book A is for Ox by Barry Sanders, not to be confused with Bernie Sanders. Uh, they are not the same person. In fact, Barry Sanders is uh, an asshole. I, I don't know him. I don't know anything about his personal life, but based on the contents of this book, I'm reasonably confident thereof. Now, familiar viewers, those who know me, will know about this book. I've been reading it for quite a while, taking breaks intermittently. For those unfamiliar viewers, though, before I even get into the substance of this book, I would like to assure that you know this. This book, this book, is horse shit. All of its ideas, epistemological, psychological, sociological, and especially linguistic, oh my god, linguistic, are terrible. Some of them are morally and ethically repugnant, some of them are just unscientific. Some of the political ideas are vaguely good if you remove from them the agenda imposed by all of the other ideas. So, keeping that in mind, enjoy. Can you tell I'm unprepared? Yeah, this is this is how you know I'm a professional video maker. The list of ghosts and ghost-like presences saturating popular culture could be extended indefinitely. It is true that ghosts often preoccupy cultures at the turn of calendrical centuries, but the end of the century won't fully explain why they hang around these days in such numbers and with such pervasiveness. Today, they refuse to leave. Today, we have more on our hands than just the end of the century. God is dead. The author has passed away. The written page is being deconstructed. Word processors have turned everyone into ghostwriters, so the technology, like a hardwired vampire, has sucked the very essence out of life. Look around. Young people prowl the streets as if in mourning. They dress entirely in black, like spectators waiting at any moment to be summoned to a funeral. There is a bright side to all of this, a reason to feel hopeful. It has to do with a line that Jonathan Swift fell back on in an age that had developed population arithmetic, which reduces people to masses and individuals to statistics and averages. In its own way, the 18th century experienced its own disappearance of human beings. Swift wrote, vision is the art of seeing the invisible. We've conjured all those ghosts and angels, those evanescent spirits, out of the living, perdurable world of stones, trees, animals, and humans. In the Middle Ages, those invisibles gave proof that the world was teeming with life, every square meter of it inhabited. They were taken for granted, as yet another stratum of reality in the infinite gradations up and down the great chain of being. Today, when most things have been drained of their invisible presence, ghosts and angels in popular culture manifest a longing for a fully animated life, a spirited existence. Every invisible creature assumes the character of a holy ghost. As each new technological gadget gets under the skin of our culture and robs us of a bit of our essence, we suffer a profound loss. We feel a great void. There must be life somewhere, a quintessence that can never be diminished or exhausted. Only by conjuring the most evanescent, fleeting creatures can we conceive of the world as something solidly alive and palpable. As the poem Seamus Heaney puts it in a poem wryly titled Seeing Things, even the stones alive with what's invisible. Out of desperation, we have reverted to acting like little children who delight in seeing their breath on frosty mornings. Ghosts and angels give us a first-hand look at our essence. Man is but breath and shadow, as Sophocles concluded. Nothing more. We need to be reminded of that. It's what cannot be taped, measured, or documented, what refuses to give itself up to technological manipulation that really constitutes life. It's the invisible, what George Steiner calls real presences that can never be destroyed. To realize that one's essence is only a shadow, a mere puff of breath may be startling news, but we also know it's true. The most insubstantial evanescent stuff, breath, is what keeps us alive and prompts us into aliveness. 
it should call for a should prompt a call for a radical return to orality. Without that return, we will soon be living in a gothic novel. Very shortly, ghosts will outnumber the living, and it will do no good to call the Ghostbusters. What a strange state of affairs that in a world dominated by the most advanced technology, the warning about human salvation should be signaled by something so irrational, so invisible, and so arcane as the occult. On reflection, though, it may not be so strange. Maybe filmmakers and writers and musicians have been able to express what few social scientists have dared to undertake, the effects of technology on human nature. I have argued that human beings, as we have known them, constructed out of a layering of texts, are fast disappearing. But popular writers and filmmakers have actually offered us a way of seeing our condition through the occult, a word which itself refers to seeing as an ocular. Spectre, too, refers to seeing and is cognate with both senses of spectacle, a display and the glasses used to see that display clearly. Like pictures on a screen, the spectral images of recent popular culture allow people to look at their own condition more closely and to reflect on it. A screen can act as a mirror. This is the true meaning of vis-a-vis, -vis, to come face to face, vision to vision, with our visual echo. Like an echo, our beings, rever our beings reverberate meaning beyond our flesh and blood existence, beyond life even, each person a holy ghost. That ghostly image cannot be destroyed. To come to see that other is to reflect on ourselves. In a world that emphasizes the visual, television, video, and films, a survival mechanism has kicked in. We need to recover the art of seeing, vis-a-vis -vis ghosts and angels. We yearn for true insight. Uh, I would just like to say, I already, I already, I already told you the audience that this book has no good ideas. Uh, that etymology that it says uh, that it says the word occult is etymologically related to the word ocular, it is not. It just factually is not. Um, occult comes from Latin. Ocular comes from Greek. Uh, occult did not come from Greek through Latin. It it just came from Latin. It means to cover up. Uh, ocular comes from you know the same root as optics, which means you know eyes. It means of eyes. It... Listen, if 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 I, as an appendix to this video, ranted about how fucking willfully ignorant Barry Sanders is of pretty much everything in the sciences, hard and social, but uh, you know, I, I I would go on for hours, hours, and I haven't even finished this book. I will say though, um, I. Just earlier today, I did a survey of this book. Like, uh, I went through uh, Echo's 14 characteristics of fascism, and I saw which ones this book ticks off. 10. 10 of 14. Which is very concerning. But hey.